I'll get to this uh, thing about uh, the 1907 thing that uh, Charles Evan Hughes said about the Constitution, which this guy must have been drinking. But anyway, I was looking last night, and I see where Pelosi's so happy now that they got Trump impeached by the Congress. She's saying it's all because of abuse of power. Well, Nancy Pelosi and your renegade band of socialist Democrats are under the same abuse of power, and you have been since 1935. Well, actually, before that. You have no authority anywhere in the Constitution to pass any firearm laws. It, if you look at the Second Amendment, Nancy Pelosi, and you other nitwits, including Republicans, it's like the Second Amendment is like a putting up a, trust, a no trespassing sign. You cannot trespass. That's what it means, period. So what you do, you try to give yourself more power. You put things under the Internal Revenue. You put things under the Commerce Clause. That's not what the Constitution says. I can take your damn asses to court, and you would lose. The Second Amendment to the Federal Constitution recognizes that the God-given right to keep and bear arms is to be free from any, any interference whatsoever from the federal government. Accordingly, the federal government is nowhere in the Constitution granted authority to abridge, restrict, or infringe in any fashion whatsoever, guns or ammunition, plus all the restrictive laws made by Congress and all regulations made by the BATF are unconstitutional because it's outside the scope of powers granted to Congress and to the executive branch by our Constitution. Restrictions of arms and ammunition is not one of the enumerated powers delegated to Congress or to the executive branch. So they stuck stuff underneath the uh, Internal Revenue, and they stuck things under the Commerce Clause. Well, the Commerce Clause was a power given to Congress to regulate commerce among the states. It was meant pri primarily to restrain the states, uh, uh, states' power, because and to ensure free flow of goods and services among the states. Congress was given. Uh, the, given the thing to regulate commerce, it, it, only to make it regular. Those limitations are reinforced by the Necessary and Proper Clause, which limits the means available to Congress to those that are only necessary for executing, for executing the, exe the enumerated powers. Congress's hands are tied. The Constitution says... <coughs> No trespassing. Period. That's what it means. Now, everybody's trying to interpret the Constitution the wrong way. You can't do that. The language of the Constitution cannot be interpreted safely except by reference to the common law and to the British institutions as they were when this instrument was framed and adopted. Instead of trying to, you know, uh, see what meaning they can be squeezed out of the text or invented against it, confirm to the probable one, which is what was what they had passed. If it says, shall not infringe, that's what it means. Period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Now, the other night, well, like I said, Nancy Pelosi, you guys are uh, abusing your power. There's nowhere in the Constitution that you're granted the power to uh, uh, mess around with firearms or to pass laws, and the states are also under that same thing. Uh, besides uh, the Constitution being the supreme law of the land, 
after 1866, after the Civil War, they had to put a stop to what states were doing. They were taking rights away from people, so they wrote the 14th Amendment, which means that, that the states are bound by the Constitution, which they should have been anyway, because it's the supreme law of the land. They made sure that you, that the states could not pass these kind of uh, unrestricted firearm laws, too. <coughs> Now, we got all these people, we got half of the Supreme Court judges up there don't even know the Constitution. They went to, went to a school, they never learned about the Constitution, they only read what other judges said about the Constitution, thus making the judge the law and not the Constitution. And that's kind of what, what this Mr. Hughes was doing. That's him. He says, uh, we're under a constitution, but the constitution is what judges says it is. It doesn't work that way. <coughs> 1787, 39 men signed the constitution in the United States. And we've been under the same government that these men have drafted uh, over 220 years ago. But like any written document, like a contract, it's subject to interpretation. It's not. It's what the people say it is. They wrote this uh, so that every single person in the United States could read and understand what it said. They put this, they wrote, they wrote this, the fundamental laws in a compact draft that expressed themselves in terms of the common law, confident, confident, mind you, that they could be shortly and easily understood. The people know what it means, the judges don't. So here we got this nitwit here. Uh, he says, hello, Hughes' daddy leads a chorus of jurors and judicial activists that want to remake society in their own image and try to use the Constitution to do it. The Supreme Court, you know, there's supposed to be the final word on the constitutional meaning. But, but what they're doing now, we no longer live under the rule of law. Instead, we have a government by tribunal. If the Constitution is whatever the judges say, they can make it say whatever they want. Up becomes down under Hughes's Constitution. Okay, let's get down here a second. Today's law schools teach students the Constitution is what the judges say it is. Imagine if other academic disciples applied the same level. A bridge is whatever an engineer says it is. A medical procedure is whatever the doctor says it is. A monetary deposit is whatever the banker says. The philosophy which borders on this is laughable in any other profession, and it's even worse when these people are trying to do the Constitution. So, for our rule of law to work properly, it must be uh, on a prior truth, and while we give judges the power to arbitrate the law, their decisions could be wrong. We need to remember that when judges write an opinion, it's just that, an opinion. In case you think I'm advocating some new radical assessment, it's not. Judges understand the distinction between the Constitution and the interpretation placed on it by them, and have stated so in their opinions. You know, you did, they didn't take an oath to uphold the interpretations of, of judges. They took, an, interpret, they took a, an oath to uphold the Constitution itself. So, so we cannot determine the original contact with the kind of scientific accuracy that we could, say, determine the orbit of planets, but we can still determine intent in the same way that we would uh, determine intent in a contract made between two parties. Well, here's the thing. There is a thing. Uh, we do have the original content, and it's called the Federalist Papers. Now, uh, I might have this too big. What our presidents read can affect policy. And this is uh, the Beacon Journal, Akron Beacon Journal, Ohio, Tuesday, May 12, 1998. What our presidents read can affect policy. Well, maybe, maybe, 
President Trump could pick up the Constitution and pick up all the, the Federalist Papers and read them every day. Because if we don't know the law, people, we're screwed. We're letting these people run all over us. Like I said, the Second Amendment to the Constitution is like putting up a no trespassing sign. That means keep out. They have no, uh, Congress has no political authority. They have no, it's outside the scope of, uh, of their authority. It's outside, uh, outside the scope of powers for the federal government and the state governments. Get that through your head. Please get that through your head because that's what's going on. Now yesterday in a video, and that's why I'm putting this up today, I goofed up by saying that uh, uh, the Constitution is what uh, Congress says. I, I, I was real tired last night when I, when I put that up and uh, I overstated my uh, uh, mental capability, let's say. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, put these people in their place. They don't know the law. They don't want to know the law. They want to squeeze things and make things and give themselves more power that the, that the Constitution did not give them. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.